Hello again. Luke Bug, the geek of Steel here, and this is episode 12 of the podcast of Steel. And this one is uh, my, I can't really call it a spoiler-free review, because all the information on the superpowered documentary is information that has pretty much been available. But I'm not going to give too much away about this documentary that is coming to Max on the 20th of July. But I do really want to talk about it. I have got a lot to say. This series that is uh, three episodes, about an hour apiece, is a fantastic insight into the world of DC Comics. I was very grateful to get a review screener of this show and I've watched it a few times and I've enjoyed it more each time learning more things about the world of DC Comics. I'm representing the brand today and the hero as always but this documentary series takes a deep deep look into the world and the future of DC Comics how it started, the good and the bad and the ugly sides of comic publishing, and so much more in between, and, and the future, as I said. So it comes to um, HBO Max on, on the 20th, and I can't wait to talk with more people around the world when it gets released. So yes, I, I know in some countries this won't be available just yet, but I'm hoping that I'm really, really hoping soon that the world is able to watch this in its entirety because it is a brilliantly, brilliantly well-made documentary. And um, I've got IMDB up on my uh, my screen here to, uh, so I don't get any information wrong. But the series is directed by uh, Leslie Iwerks and uh, Mark Catalina and absolute heroes. This documentary is, of course, very visual. It's fantastic, but I've had it on in the background whilst I've been doing other things. And for me, it was just like the perfect podcast for me, talking about my heroes and stories that I've loved over the years, whilst also learning new things about DC Comics and about Superman and heroes and villains and directors and artists and writers. I've got notes everywhere, so if you are watching this on YouTube, hello, um, you'll be going to be looking at me going through my phone and also my notes. Look at that. How's that for detailed notes? Episode 1, 2 and 3. Uh, yeah, this is like how my brain works. It is noisy and messy, but I was writing things down to remember the things that I was watching because there was so much going on. But the first time I watched each episode, I try to escape from all other forms of electronic alerts and just sit back and enjoy the story of DC Comics, of where it all began. And as I said, it gave me a, a deeper connection to the stories and the heroes and the company that I've loved over the years. They've made some wise choices and they've made some bad choices and they've not always worked with a complete source of integrity. They've not been as honest or heroic as they could be, but this documentary doesn't shy away from that. It goes on everything, and I commend all the researchers, producers and writers, directors of this show that have made this happen, because it is a brilliant documentary. Now, to the side of me, on my, um, let's say, my, my, my table of steel, I've got books everywhere. I love learning more things about my heroes. Um, especially Superman, of course. I am the geek of steel, after all. But DK Books, over the years, have released some fantastic oh, and heavy and glorious encyclopedias. Oh, well, I'm having trouble holding right now, but here they are. There's a thumbnail for you. <laughs> and I love learning more about the things that I enjoy. So this one here, the DC Vault, this was produced um, quite a few years ago now, but it's got lots of information and, and sort of uh, copies of merchandise and fan club licenses and badges and props and comics, which is, um, I, I believe I should 
probably do a separate video and podcast on because it is a beautiful piece of memorabilia. And I thought that I knew a fair amount about the world of DC Comics, especially after reading this book, The Superboys, by Brad Rieker. Um, this is a detailed, detailed book into the world of Superman and how he was created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster many, many years ago. And if you know anything about the origin of Superman's story, you will know that Superman, as always, has had a controversial life. Its creators have not always been acknowledged or paid fairly over the years. Licensing has always been sometimes problematic in the world of comics and movies. And that is featured in this documentary. Nothing is, is left off limits, as it were. There were a few things that I feel could have made this documentary better, and I will get to those things towards the end. But if you love these characters as much as I do, and you're still wanting to learn more things about new storylines, then this documentary is for you. To give you a deeper bond, as it were, to not only these stories, but the heroes that brought them to life. The creators, the artists, the writers, everybody in this documentary gets their story told. Now, these are only three episodes with, as I said, about an hour apiece. There's so much more that could be covered. And I'm really hoping that this was a, was a test, as it were, and in the future we get more episodes, deeper dives into the worlds of these characters and these stories. Because, as we know, Superman now is, what, 85 years he's been around for. That's 85 years of comics and TV and films and storytelling and the ups and downs of DC Comics. There is a lot more that could be told. I understand that they wanted to get as much information in this series as you can tell by this, by this whiteboard. There is um, a lot that they covered. But I feel that some of the things could have been, had some, had some more focus put on. And that's why I'm so, I'm here with my fingers crossed that more episodes get made in the future. Because this was made so well that it's just given me a hunger to learn more about these characters and this world of comics. So I've got notes, as I said, all over the place because I don't want to miss too much, too much out. But episode one, entitled The Hero's Journey. Uh, for over 85 years, DC has been home to a universe of iconic characters and unparalleled storytelling. But its origins began with the brilliant minds who created a superhero trinity. Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman. From survival to revival, DC navigates the birth of the sidekick, parental concerns after World War II and a corporate takeover amid a struggle to stay current. And even that sounds like a film... In itself, <laughs> it's enough to, to to get you hooked, and the hour absolutely flew by. I really enjoyed the music, the images that were used, some that I've not seen before, um, and to hear Jerry Seagull and Joe Shuster, to hear their voices talk about my hero, was um, wonderful. I've, I've read about them, and I've seen some interviews of them talking about Superman, but to hear their voices in this show, and for Superman to be the first hero that is focused on, it gave me a big smile and made my Superman heart just grow a little bit bigger. And it was a great intro into this documentary series. And as I said, I've got all my notes here, Superman, Batman, Sidekicks, Wonder Woman's, uh, the comics that were used in World War II, the propaganda that was used, as we all know, there were quite a few racist comics brought out back then with some uh, awful car artwork. And again, it wasn't brushed under the mat. It was brought up. It was talked about. Um, we talk about the Justice Society, uh, how comics needed to change with the times after World War Two, the introduction of the Flash and parallel worlds and multiverses before multiverses were a thing and how as a kid back then that would have just blown my mind but it's again it starts off with action comics talking about superman talking about that comic that made this world happen and to be a child 
back then that yes there were comics available there were comics about war stories and cowboys and historical events but to have a comic with this hero from another planet lifting a car i mean i'm surrounded by that classic imagery everywhere that moment when superman lego prop for there just perfectly placed it would have blown my mind to see that and to have again that comic that moment be the 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 starting point of this documentary series really really made it special for me and even talking about it now it makes me want to go back and watch it again i think i'm probably going to because i can't wait to to talk with more people when this is available i'm not sure how long it will be available for hopefully forever and a day because this is the kind of show series that i want to watch when nothing else is on for one or i need to escape with something that's not loud or visually exciting it's escapism but it's relaxing and i feel that i'm learning at the same time and yes so uh, narrated by rosario dawson and her link to the world of pop culture and her soothing voice it made me learn more and stay focused on the things that was happening on the screen i'm quite easily distracted by shiny objects or anything that can make my eyes drift off but for this series for all three episodes i was glued to the screen i didn't want to look away and that's why the, as i said the first few time the first time i watched it it was just me and the screen and it was perfect escapism whilst also learning more about this world that i've come to adore over the years and they've got pretty much everybody that is from the world of comics those that are with us and those sadly that have passed away talking about their heroes talking about the world of comics talking about the good and the bad side when it comes to working with publications and companies and copyrights and it's just beautifully beautifully done and i would say dc comics of course is my my team my go-to but the world of marvel comics had to be addressed and they do talk about marvel in this series how some of the comics and the way of storytelling had to change with the times and when marvel came around they were doing things in such a, a dynamic and fresh way that dc comics had to follow suit and again without spoiling too much they handled that moment in time very very well but the whole series it's sort of multi-linear it travels through time it goes back to the very early days is up to modern day and it skips backwards and forwards but not in a confusing way it really does help to explain how they've grown over the years by showing where they've come from and these interviews with creators and artists and writers that a few of the quotes I, i've written down because they are simply beautiful word piles it really is a must watch for any fan of superheroes or comics or history it's done so done so perfectly well um but yes but i say on, on to episode two i'm not sure how long this episode will be because i know that when i'm i'm going to start talking about this tv series this documentary i'm not going to stop so i will try to keep it under an hour i think i can do that but episode two so episode two is titled coming of age during a period of declining comic book sales a bold move resets dc's entire universe as the company decides to also take a gamble on a new superman movie while rivals begin to address pressing social issues a determined dc introduces their first black superhero and breaks story boundaries under their new imprint vertigo comics with the hopes of maturing comic books into an everlasting adult art form now you can probably tell by my notes here light blue was episode one episode two was in purple episode three was in red i couldn't stop listening and watching episode two mainly because my boy features a lot in it whether it's superhero comics the superhero movie with christopher reeve it's got everything in it and everything that i love 
anyway. But other than that, there's still lots of new things in here that I've wanted to learn more about now. So there are some comics that are still on my to read list. You can see my shelves of steel there behind me and, and my long boxes underneath. I'm constantly learning new things about Superman and DC Comics and other heroes. It's a never ending library, as it were, of things for me to enjoy and experience. And I'm enjoying, you know, stepping out of comic comfort zones, as it were, and reading new stories. And I've picked out a few that were mentioned in this show. Tom King talks about uh, New Gods and Swamp Thing, stories that I've wanted to read for a while and now I want to more because I've learned more about them through this show. Um, sort of a man can't live on, on Superman alone, as it were. Well, I, I, I can't. I, I'm learning new things about Superman. But I want to learn more things about Wonder Woman, about Batman, about the villains, about new gods, about just the world of DC Comics after watching and enjoying this show. But yeah, episode two, lots of focus on Superman and the Batman movie. Um, whereas episode one did touch on uh, the Batman TV series from the 60s. Again, the good and the bad sides of it. Um it was done very well. I, I Again, I don't want to spoil too much, but some people love Batman series, some people not so much. And in this documentary that they talk with people that have been associated with Batman all their professional lives. Some liked it. Some were inspired to take on new projects to, to change the way that Batman is perceived by the general public. But it was still a huge part in the world of DC Comics when the Batman TV series began. And everything over the DC Comics decades, there's there's been something that they've always tried something new. They've always tried to be innovating and entertaining whilst clinging on to those core values of heroism and interesting and exciting storytelling. That's what I got out of this documentary, is that they're always learning and always trying to do something new. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But yes, in this episode, lots of things were mentioned. Um, also, Linda Carter is in this episode talking a lot about Wonder Woman and what is not to love about Linda Carter. They do uh, speak with other celebrities as well. Henry Cavill does appear in this documentary talking about Superman. That was a uh, bittersweet to hear him talk about Superman in such a beautiful way. But, you know, we, um, we soldier on. And that's the thing. These characters over the years will be played by different people. We know now that we have got a new actor playing Superman. We've got a new world of comics and stories and movies coming. So, as I've always said, we must respect the past and embrace the future. And this documentary does that so well. So, so well. Um, but we've got Aquaman in this episode. We've got the Joker. We've got gambles that the DC Comics took when it came to the world of storytelling. As, as I said, some worked and some didn't. There were some beautiful moments in this episode uh, that talked about Neil Adams, who was sadly no longer with us. And this particular episode, it did end with a memorial with um, a little piece for Neil Adams and George Perez, which brought a smile to my face, knowing that these two heroes of the world of comics are still being respected and adored and missed, as they always will be. But, yeah, this episode for me, it it has a lot. I feel this one, it was the most one that had things crammed into it. Everything from DC Comics up to Vertigo Comics with Sandman. Another storyline that I've recently gotten back into from Neil Gaiman and how that pretty much helped keep DC Comics alive uh, towards the eight, late 80s and early 90s when, when these darker, more mature storylines when they were stepping away from some say the campy side of superheroes they had to try something new and edgier and again it worked because vertigo comics came to be and it, and it really did give a boost to dc comics and yes this episode 
had so much in it. I could have had like five hours on each episode. Um, I, I felt after watching all of these episodes that I wanted to learn more. I want to take a doctorate in DC Comics if there is such a thing because I feel this show, yes, has only just sort of scratched the surface, as it were. It's given me um, a thirst and a hunger to learn more about Superman and comics and the way that the, the business side of things sometimes takes precedence over the story, over the creation. And that is talked about in this ep in these episodes when it came to a point in time when people were really... There was a comic boom. People weren't interested in the stories. They were interested in collecting comics for the financial side, the investment of having a rare comic. And I feel that was a, a sad time when people were more interested in just storing them away and not reading them, not enjoying them, not having the pages become dog-eared when a story becomes so well-loved that you read it over and over again. And there's a beautiful moment in, I think, episode one where we go into Jim Lee's studio. Oh, f even through a secret panel in a, in a bookcase, in a bookshelf in a different room. And he's talking about uh, one of his favourite comics that is now stuck together with tape because he's enjoyed it so many times over the years and read it and copied the artwork and, and gotten inspiration from that story. Comics need to be read. Comics need to be enjoyed. Because if we don't enjoy them, they're going to go away. Same goes the films. They would go in the same direction. And there was a fantastic quote. Now I'm talking about that as I'm going on a massive tumble of words out of my mouth because I'm excited to talk about this show. Where are we? Where are we? Here we go. Um, it's from Mike Carlin, who was a Superman editor and a, and a fantastic ambassador for DC Comics. Essentially, he said, when it became, when Superman comics were dwindling and we had the whole the death of Superman moment, he said, if you're not going to water the flower, it's going to die. And this is when people were sometimes upset about this whole thing that the most inspirational thing that Superman ever did in the comics was die. And people were saying, well, I, I don't read Superman comics. But these were the same people that were saying, don't kill him off. You can't kill Superman. He's an iconic character. He's a huge part of the DC universe. And people who were saying this hadn't been reading the comics. The comics world was sort of dwindling away. And the death of Superman certainly did bring readers back. One of the uh, the most, I would say, controversial and exciting moments in, in comic book history was the death of Superman. And then, of course, the return of the Superman and the reign of the Superman. And again, there are documentaries about that online. It needs to have, like, a whole documentary series about the death of Superman, about those stories, about that crew of people that decided to sit down in a room one and one afternoon and uh, Jerry Ordway sort of, you know, had that idea, well, let's just kill off Superman, you know. Let's just do that. Let's see what happens. But, yes, episode two was brilliant. And again, I, I've got a phone that was, is full of quotes that I will get to. And But again, I've just got notes everywhere because I can't stop thinking about this show and I'm, I'm going to watch it again tonight today is Sunday the 9th of July this episode will be going live on the 10th of July when the embargo lifts and I'm excited to share it after that um, but there was again Paul Levitz who um, has been on the podcast a few years ago talking about the world of DC he said this quote that I'm looking at right now if the Christopher Reeve, Richard Donner movie hadn't succeeded, DC might have ended up with a very, very minimal publishing schedule. And the company that you think of might not have survived. And I, I love, clearly I'm biased because I love Superman, but Superman does feature a lot in this documentary series. As does Batman, as does Wonder Woman. You can't not have the Trinity in a documentary, documentary series about DC Comics. But they do try and cover as much as possible. And they do a fantastic job of blending it all together. While not 
overloading you with information, but also keeping it structured so that it's like a story being told. There is a beginning, a middle and an end, much like a classic comic. And yeah, I'm looking going forward again, going back to watching more things about this series. But they do towards the end of this episode, episode two, they talk a lot about Kingdom Come. And there are interviews with Alex Ross and Mark Wade. And goodness me, I could listen to Mark Wade and Alex Ross talk about Superman and Kingdom Come for hours, for absolute hours. And um, I've written down some of their very, very long quotes. This one, let's have a look. I'm just scrolling through my phone now because I've got voices of everybody and quotes from everybody in this phone. Okay, I'm going to just look, get lost now. I'm boring you now because I'm just scrolling through my phone, but I probably won't edit this out because I'm too excited to share this particular podcast with you all. But anyway, this is what Mark Wade, this is one of the quotes Mark Wade said about Superman. That's what makes Superman, Superman. Superman's greatest superpower is not that he can fly or that he can lift a car. It's that with the ability to do anything, take anything, have anything he wants, he's selfless beyond reason. He will never ever put himself first and his needs and his wants before anybody else's. And that is an amazing super superpower. Oh, it's just making me smile, read all these beautiful quotes. And yes, this, oh, this was the one. This was talking about when Superman 78 first came out. You know, this huge gamble, this huge moment. They do mention in the film that Superman, the movie, wasn't the first superhero movie. It was actually Shazam many decades before. But Superman 1978 happened and pretty much, you know, that became one of the, the ultimate superhero movies to watch and enjoy and why it's still enjoyed today. But Mark Wade said this about when he first watched the film. I went into that movie theatre just feeling like no one cared about me. No one saw me. No one heard me. Superman cares about everybody. He doesn't care whether you're rich or poor or where you come from. And I came out of that movie convinced that whatever I was going to do with the rest of my life, it was going to have to have something to do with Superman. And I love that. I love that. I absolutely love that. That's to me is is what why Mark Wade is just a fantastic human and a fantastic Superman creator and a Superman ambassador. And it was a, a beautiful thing to, to listen to. And again, it's why I, I would love to interview Mr. Mark Wade again in the future at some point to talk about what Superman means to him. We did share an interview a few years ago, but but Alex Ross is a another one of those white whales that I would just absolutely adore to not only listen to him talk about Superman, but to ask him some questions about Kingdom Come. Because to me, that story is, is very, very special when it comes to the world of DC Comics and the world of storytelling. And if you haven't read it, sit yourself down and enjoy it because once you start reading it you won't be able to stop but um as i said there was um a little henry cavill quote in episode one i'm going back to this one now without you know giving too many spoilers away and but henry cavill said this he's someone who is always trying to do the right thing that's his genuine intention even if he doesn't achieve what he sets out to do he will make the best effort to make amends and there's so much which hasn't been told or said about him up until now. And yes, that quote was probably said before everything changed and he wasn't Superman anymore, but he st still will always be Superman. As will Christopher Reeve, as will Tom, Le Tom Welling, as will Kirk Allen, as will George Reeves, as will Brandon, Dean Cain and everybody else over the years, including Tyler, who is doing a fantastic job on Superman and Lois. And also the voice actors. I'm on a rant now. I've recently been enjoying uh, My Adventures with Superman. I was allowed to watch um, the first seven episodes that I'm 
not going to talk about because I don't want to spoil anything. But the first two episodes now have gone out and the world has reacted in a beautiful, positive and passionate way about this adorable animation that is filled with beautiful visuals, fantastic music and a beautiful relationship between Superman and Clark and Lois and Jimmy and everybody and everything that will happen soon. I'm trying my best to uh, avoid spoilers, but it's a beautiful, beautiful show. And yes, another Superman to add to that series. It was beautifully done. Anyway, I'm starting to waffle on now because I'm talking about Superman and that is what happens. But from that, Yes, episode two, we, we talk about how the comics evolved and they went into Vertigo comics and the storylines got darker and graphic novels became a thing where you could go into a bookshop and buy a collection of stories in one single book, which pretty much was another thing that helped bring back DC Comics. They've had a bumpy ride over the years. The business side of things hasn't always been successful for them, but constantly trying to evolve and change and adapt whilst holding on to those core values now episode number three how long have i been there rambling on for half an hour that's not too bad is it i don't think so i could talk about this for hours i won't but i could <laughs> episode number three a better tomorrow which is as we know superman's new line but episode three Tired of being left out of the conversation, a group of diverse creators form Milestone Media to give the voice to marginalised characters and stories born out of their own experiences. After more than eight decades of history, DC visionaries look forward to a future that is representative of all in their ever-expanding universe. A great episode looking into the history of how they have been changing over the years and trying to get everybody's story told for representation for just being noticed for being for being there for anybody and for this episode the interviews that we used were beautiful as always but this episode also as well as the comics features on the video games and the tv shows and the animation including batman the animated series i personally would have liked a bit more attention well here's the thing spoiler alert smallville doesn't appear in this documentary series at all um the the, the flash universe and and green arrow that gets featured but there's no mention of smallville now for me smallville being a show that many of you know was the reason why I got into Superman. I enjoyed that moment of waking up one morning and, and watching a TV show. And it was episode one. It was the pilot for Smallville. And I was like, oh, I, I recognise these characters. I know the world of Superman, but I, back then, the the geek of Steel was just, an, was just an idea that I hadn't even created yet. But because of Smallville, my love for Superman grew and grew and grew and when season one finished i wanted to learn more about the characters so that's what i did i went off and i started reading i went off and asked people what should i read a lot of people said the death of superman which you can see right there behind me smallville did that for me smallville opened up a world of comics and a world of, en of enjoyment and happiness for me now there was another quote that i will hopefully find a little bit quicker because I'm not going to find it now but Smallville for me is, is, is essential Smallville if we didn't have Smallville we wouldn't have all had all these shows today because of that I feel that it should have had some time in this documentary there should have been some focus on it they should have had just a, a small section. I would have been happy with that about Smallville. But sadly, there wasn't. I would have, you know, as I said, hopefully more episodes of this do get made in the future. 
because we need them and I need a Smallville documentary <laughs> because that show really did make all these other shows happen. Smallville walked so the Flash could run in a way. But anyway, I'm, I'm rambling and I found the quote by Marv Wolfman. My friend and I were watching the show. This was the Superman TV show. My friend and I were watching the show and at the end it said, Superman is based on the copyrighted character appearing in Action Comics and Superman. And the two of them got up, walked to the corner and bought our first comics and never stopped. So that was by Marv Wolfman, a huge name in the world of comics and DC Comics and Superman. So for me, I, I felt that resonated with me as well from watching that first episode of Smallville. That was my entrance into the world of DC Comics and Superman. Because I loved that show, I wanted to learn more about Superman. So that's that's probably, yes, one of my only negative things about this is that Smallville didn't feature in this documentary. But that's me being biased. Hopefully, as I said, we will get more episodes in the future and Smallville will get its time to shine. It was a series for 10 years, 10 seasons. Some of them were great. Some of them were not so great. But still, it is an important part in Superman history and the history of DC Comics but still episode 3 was very very enjoyable and they still cram so much into this episode including lots of fantastic stories about Milestone Media and Dwayne McDuffie and everybody's story that they had time to shine and again the good and the bad when certain gambles that DC Comics took certain business ideas didn't happen and there were comic crashes and comic booms which I'm sure will still happen in years to come. Comics have had to evolve with the times whether it be digital sales or still printing comics. Comics will always be relevant and there was a fantastic moment in I believe it was episode two where comic shops became a thing when that really helped comics get more recognition and were a place where people could go and get their pull lists they could read their favorite stories and the world of comics could continue to be told because of comic shops because a lot of supermarkets and other places weren't selling them um sometimes because some people thought the comics were were, were brainwashing children they weren't you know a good these heroes weren't good role models for kids. Some of these comics and stories they felt were just really not good for children, which is a bizarre take. But they do mention that in the comic. Comic book burning and censorship and how the comic authority came to be. And again, it's made me want to go back and learn more about the world of DC Comics. Maybe I'll go back to school or university and find somewhere that does a course in the world of DC Comics, because man, sign me up. I've got enough DC Comics stationery and books surrounding me where I could, um, I've got all my stationery ready to go back to school to learn about Superman some more and learn about DC Comics. But yes, episode three, it's pretty much brings it up to modern day. So we do talk about the Snyderverse. We talk about Wonder Woman. We talk about Jim Lee coming in to the world of DC Comics, how he was almost headhunted to come on and work for DC. But it's just really a fantastic, fantastically made documentary about this world of comics, about this world of entertainment that we've we've all had in our lives, whether we are, you know, diehard DC Comics fans or fans of TV or fans of movies. These characters have always been there. They've always been a part of our lives. Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman, now they've all been around since the 30s and the 40s. It's a part of modern culture. It's a part of the world of entertainment as we know it. So to have this series not only focus on those characters, but everything else that came from it, it's beautifully well made. It's really, really thorough entertaining 
and the information isn't just sort of thrown at you with bullet points. This was this year, this is what happened. This is what happened the year after. Because of that, this happened. It is structured. And again, it has that timeline underneath where it goes backwards and forwards and how certain things happened and then later down the line, something else happened, much like the space-time continuum. And they talk about that in the show and also parallel universe and multiverses and how with storytelling, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. And how sometimes we need a clean slate to start again. And DC Comics has been known to do that over the years quite a few times and we are at a time now when that is happening again we're going to get a new superman we're going to get a new line of dc comic stories and movies and there was a quote towards the end of the show and this quote was right now dc is at a crossroads we are trying to build the future without doing a disservice to the past and i love that Again, going back to respect the past and embrace the future. These characters, these stories, they mean so much to so many different people for different things. Some of us prefer the heroes. Some prefer the villains. Some want dark and gritty stories. Some want stories that are filled with hope and passion and compassion for heroes and the world around us. But DC Comics continue to try new things whilst clinging on to those core values of classic heroes and storytelling. That's what I feel they've done from day one, back with the introduction of Superman and action comics, then trying something new with Batman, then trying something new with Wonder Woman, and then The Flash, and then Aquaman, and then everything and anything else they've done, it's always been trying to push things forward. And I love that. And I love this documentary. And yes, I've still got more notes that I probably didn't mention on here, but I will talk about over the upcoming weeks when this show gets released on July the 20th. But it was so well done. And I'm so very, very happy and, and thankful for being able to watch this sooner so I can create my reviews and create some way to help promote the release of this show. I know that I'm not going to stop talking about it, that's for sure, because I've just thoroughly enjoyed it. And I, and I can't wait again to talk with more people about it. I have talked with a few people that, that have seen this, but this is from me. To, to anybody that has worked on this particular series, worked on these episodes, thank you. Thank you from the, the bottom of my geeky Superman heart. To anybody that has worked on Superman or created a Superman story or created Superman artwork, thank you. But also thank you to the artists and writers of stories that I've yet to read. I've ordered New Gods this morning. I've ordered some Swamp Thing stories because that is another universe that I want to delve into and learn more about the characters. But yes, Leslie Iwerks and Mark Catalina, the directors of these episodes, thank you so much. Thank you to the researchers and the archivists that have got some seriously, seriously good hunting because they have found some fantastic footage that I've not seen before. There was a fantastic video clip of a, of a young child getting their first Superman t-shirt through the post. And this was, you know, sort of a, must have been back, back in the 40s or 50s. It was a black and white footage. But the t-shirt I've not seen before. I need one. It was a classic Superman symbol that I've not got on a t-shirt. And now I need. But yes, to every single person that worked on this show, to every single person that has worked on DC Comics over the years, bringing these stories to life, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This series, yes, comes out on July the 20th on Max, the HBO streaming service. As I said, as soon as I know if it is going to be streaming anywhere else around the world, I will let you all know. This, it needs to get shown in schools and in universities and in offices around the world. It is educational, it is entertaining, and it's given me a deeper connection to my heroes, to these stories. I'm going to go now and I will probably watch these episodes again. 
to enjoy them. But I'm looking forward to when you can as well, because we can talk more about it. It's a fantastic series and one that I'm very grateful for. And yes, fingers crossed, we get more in the future and they can tackle Smallville. They can tackle more of the Superman animated universe and the animated films because they weren't really talked about too much in this either. But in the future, who knows? Maybe we will get some more. I'm really hopeful that we do. And that was it. That was episode 12 of the podcast of Steel. I've been Luke Bug, the geek of Steel. Thank you for listening and watching if you're on YouTube. Hello. I will be back soon as I've got some fun interviews sorted out for the next few weeks. I will be taking a week off soon as I am going to Scotland for an adventure. So that'll be a fun trip. Um, I may record a podcast there. I don't know. Or I may just switch off and go off grid as it were. I probably won't because I love sharing my adventures with all of you. You can find me online. Just search for The Geek of Steel. You will find me on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Threads now. I'm not sure how, how long that will be about. The new uh, social media app from Instagram, which is like Twitter, but not. But yeah, just search for The Geek of Steel. And remember, if you did like this episode, please review it. Please like, comment, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe and share. It really helps me out. And um, thank you for listening and letting me enjoy this adventure of being a Superman ambassador and a DC Comics fan. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to do things like receive screeners for reviewing purposes, go on adventures, go to screenings, go to fun events. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be doing this. And if it wasn't for Superman, I wouldn't be here. So as always, Superman is number one, but DC Comics has a very special place in my heart. Please, when this episode is um, available, when these episodes are available, go and enjoy them. We can talk about it. Send me a message. Comment on my posts. I want to talk about this series as much as I possibly can. I need to know more. I need to know more. I'm Luke Bug, the Geek of Steel. Thank you for listening. And I will be back soon with a brand new episode of the podcast of Steel. <laughs>